What's up guys, John here and welcome back to John Moon Studios. In this week's video, we're going to start a series called How to Use Logic Pro X. And in this video, we're going to talk about how to prepare your score editor in order to send the music to programs like Finale or Sibelius for musicians to read your music if they need to record for film, TV, uh, video games, or even commercial music. So let's dive right into it. So the first thing we're going to talk about is how to actually get into the score editor using a project of mine. So here I have the piano part. We're going to open it by double clicking on the region and then clicking where it says score. So here we have uh, the entire score. So in order to just see the piano part, we're going to click out of the region and we're going to click right back into the region. Now there's easier ways to get into this menu. So let's see how it works this button right here will open the piano roll score editor step editor and you're gonna see that it opens to the the, the most recent uh, screen you have so if, let's say you have the piano roll open you press the button the piano roll will appear so you got to make sure that it's on the score um, tab here another way to do it is the the shortcut is the key command you just press N uh, on your keyboard and automatically whatever region is highlighted it will open the score for that so now we're going to look at how um, to change some of the staffs because sometimes uh, when you open up the regions it's going to be in the incorrect staff so what you need to make sure first of all is that you're clicked inside of the score so let's say we click outside of the region really quick the menu that that was on the left disappears Right? and we have no way to change anything inside of the score editor. We need to click inside of the score editor and then this menu pops up here. So let's assume that we opened up this piano track and it had a bass clef. Obviously, the notes are way too high up here so you can't even see it uh, on the bass clef because we know that also piano uses what we call the grand staff to read music which has both, both uh, the bass clef and the treble clef. We're going to click here to where it says style. So here it says bass. We're going to go ahead and move it to piano. And Logic is smart enough to know that when you click piano, the notes that were too high on the bass clef, it's going to automatically put it on the treble clef here. And therefore, our job is done here. Of course, if there's any adjustments of notes, you can either go into the uh, MIDI information and fix the notes or grab the pencil and draw the notes in, which we can cover in another video. So now we're going to go into the next instrument. So here I have the violin. And again, I'm going to use the shortcut N to reach the score editor. So the violin part is in treble clef. So here we're all set and all, we're all ready to go. So we're going to go ahead and close that. Same thing for violin two. We're going to press N. It's in the treble clef. So we're ready to go. Uh, we're going to go to now the viola part. So the viola part is in what we call the C clef, right? So the viola part, let's assume that we opened it and the viola part was in the bass clef. Again, while clicked inside of the score editor, we're going to go into style and we're going to find where it says viola. And then it's going to go ahead and switch it to the viola uh, clef, the clef that the violas read, which is the C clef. We're going to go ahead and close that. And we're going to go into the cello section to see how, how the score is written out. So we have bass clef. So perfect. We're going to go into the bass clef. And now we see that it has a bass clef. But what's interesting about this one is that it has an eight under it. So what this eight means is that all the notes that are written on the staff, the musician needs to know that it needs to be an octave lower from what it is, right? Because the, this clef is called the contrabass clef. So if we open up the contrabass clef or the, the, the list here and we put the regular bass, you're going to see that the notes are really low. They're really down there. So in order to get these notes to be seen on the clef, instead of having musicians to read the notes all the way down here, what I did was I used the contrabass clef, which everything written here, it's uh, interpreted as an octave lower. So the musicians will know what to do when they see that. And then we're going to skip the choirs and we're going to go straight into the French horns here. So we're going to open it by pressing N. 
and this one is a little bit different because here we have a treble clef but if we put the treble clef the notes change here right so the thing about the french horns is that the french horns come in different keys so we got to make sure that the french horns are reading french horn music because only because it says e here if the french horns play e because of their transposition uh, the note is going to sound incorrect so the way that we get the horn players to play in the correct key of course is if we choose horn in f which is the horn that i uh chose for this um, composition this key this composition is in E minor so we have one sharp so it automatically adds the sharp in there and then here we have the actual French horn part uh, the reason why it doesn't work again in treble clef is because the notes uh, even though you can read it and logic will register it as these notes um, it's gonna sound incorrect with the rest of the players because of the tuning of the instrument so this is the correct um, form that I want for the for the French horns. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to view the entire score. So we've seen the parts individually. Now we want to see the entire score. So we're going to go ahead and click this little arrow right here. All right, we're going to click it again. And then this is going to pop up. Now if we zoom out a little bit, you're going to see the entire score. Uh, from left to right right because right here we have the vertical um, Stack which means they're gonna be stacked vertically if we choose the horizontal stack then the music will um, Move into what we call a horizontal uh, Stack where if you're zoomed in a little bit, you're gonna be reading the music from left to right like this Right of course if you're zoomed out then you're gonna see the whole page and this is what we call the vertical stack. So if I zoom it in, everything is actually going to stack up on each other and you scroll going down and up. And then we have uh, this button here, which is the page layout. Um, as we zoom in, we start to see where the page layout works. So you can see page one, page two, page three, page four, page five. And this is blanked out here because there are so many parts the, the the format in here there's so many parts that it kind of just goes past the page but that's not what we're worried about because we won't print out the music through here we're actually going to export this um, as an xml file music xml file that way whoever is printing out your music whether it's you or you send it over to a company to do it they open it on programs like finale or sibelius and they can go ahead and format the score to come out uh, like on a bigger page because the conductor usually has a bigger uh, book with all the parts because he has to read all of the parts of course and then the individual players will have a normal uh, sheet of paper with the music on it so we're going to talk about how to export this now um, if we're out of the region like if we click out the region and again we're not inside the score editor you go to file export the score as music xml will not be highlighted so we can't even click on it it's it's grayed out so we need to make sure that we're still inside of the score menu so we're going to click in the score menu it's blue here and then all these options on the side will pop up now we can go ahead and click file export and then score as music xml again this is a, a form of uh, finale and Sibelius to read the file that's the format they use XML so again it'll open on any transcription uh, softwares that you may have even on the iPad um, I use Symphony Pro 5 and I'm able to airdrop it into my iPad and it automatically identifies it inside of the program and I'm able to open it up and do any adjustments or final editing on those programs because those programs are meant for um, for uh, orchestration, arranging, uh, printing out papers, Th those are the programs for that. So we export it, and then it's gonna tell you where you wanna bounce it. So again, you wanna uh, bounce it on the desktop. I already have one on the desktop, I believe. Oh yeah, right here, the XML right here. And then this file right here is the one that you send um, to whoever is printing out 
the pages for the orchestra or the, the band members to read. If you found the information of this video helpful, go ahead and hit the like button, subscribe, and don't forget to turn on notifications so you don't miss any of my weekly videos. If you have any questions throughout the videos, please drop your comments down below and I will get to them as soon as possible. If you have any other uh, videos you would like me to explain or things uh, that how to do in Logic Pro, uh, please let me know also in the comment section and I will go ahead and do a video on that. Don't forget to share with your musician friends. I will see you all soon.